What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. And today we're continuing our series where we look at the top 10 best cards in every main set of the game. Today's main set is Galactic Overlord. Galactic Overlord is actually a fantastic set of Yugi Mans. We're approaching the a point where I actually got back into the game. I had taken a break, like beginning of GX to like pretty much now or the next like two sets or something like that. So I'm excited. I'm starting to actually recognize cards and I've, I've, I've used some of these. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh... I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As with any of my lists, I do try to keep, like, the archetype cards, like, one per list, so that we don't just fill the whole list up with, like, one type of card. Try to keep it interesting. But with this set, I don't, I don't think that's much of a concern. Alright, boys, let's go! Number 10 is a normal spell, Drag Connection. Reveal one dragon monster from your hand, then add one dragon monster from your deck to your hand whose level matches the revealed monster, and shuffle that revealed monster back into your deck. The dragon support is real, boys. Generic search card for dragons? All right. It's a damn shame about that card advantage, um, but with a particular archetype that debuts in this set, uh, sometimes sometimes you you don't mind the neg one if it means you can at least play some Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Not much to say here. It's just a solid search card for arguably one of the best types in the game. Number nine is Nimble Manta. Level two, Wada. Fish monster! 800 attack, 100 defense, but we don't care. Thank you guys over in the Discord for uh, making this list and uh, sticking this one on there for me. Uh, you guys are always looking out for your boy. Sticking level 2 water monsters on here. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard via card effect, you can special summon any number of Nimble Mantas from your deck. Normally, I summon two of them. You know what this thing combos well with? That true King uh, Fathomer guy. I'll let you guys stew with that one. Obviously, it's a when you can, it does miss timing. That's kind of a crapshoot. That's terrible. But the fact that we can kind of trip it with other cards means that if you do make a dedicated Nimble engine, this is a great addition to it because it's just a more free advantage. And the Nimbles are actually pretty good at that. It's about time we get a new one. Just saying. Number eight's a card that I just learned existed, Xerath. <laughs> you know what? It's cool, actually. Continuous Trap card. Here we go. Once per turn, when a level five or higher monster's effect is activated while you control an Xe monster, you can smell the synchro hate with this card. Except if that effect activates during the damage step. Feels bad, man. Discard one card, negate the effect, and if you do, destroy it. It's weird that it's a continuous trap and not a counter trap because it's a it's a negation effect. Those are normally stuck on spell speed threes. But the fact that it's continuous means like once per turn, you can just kind of do this. I, I don't know. I think that's cool. I just think they're neat. Obviously, its use is extremely specific. It has to be used against a deck that doesn't play uh, links or Xyz because those don't have levels. And if it does play levels, they got to be five or above. But we've had plenty of formats in this game where a bunch of big main deck monsters or big synchro monsters are like the flavor of the day. So if you're playing some sort of dedicated XC deck, this is actually a fun tech option. It does require a little setup to get your negations ready, but you know, you set this up with a dweller or something, you know, yeah, you could have a worse board. This is, this is a cool card. I like this. All right, are you guys ready? It's time for another... Dave doesn't know what the deck does. I feel like it's always this deck too. <laughs> insect the ladybug. Level two dark insect Uh, with terrible stats. <laughs> yeah. Once per turn, you can equip an insector monster from your graveyard to this card. Uh, equipping monsters to other monsters is this deck's gimmick. So that effect is relevant in the deck itself. While this card is equipped to a monster, the monster gains two levels and also gets the stats of this card uh, added to its own. Also, while this card is equipped to a monster, you can send this equipped card to the graveyard to target one face of monster on the field and increase its level by two. Okay, so I don't know how the deck works, but if memory serves me, I think what we care about is the fact that this thing can voluntarily send itself to the graveyard uh, instead of having to get popped which triggers oh boy hornet insector hornet ah no nah, I, I got it hornet hornet can do the same thing unequip itself to the and send to the graveyard to blow a thing up so I, I think you get it back with this card I think that's what you're supposed to do <laughs> I'm gonna 
my Discord guys start putting notes in these things? When you guys know it's a deck I don't know how to play, come on, man. And the fact that like none of them are hard once per turns is, is, is probably loopy, right? Okay, anyway. Oh, thank God, Night Beam. I know how this card works. Target one set, spell or trap your opponent controls destroy that target. Your opponent cannot activate the targeted card in response to this card's activation. As a normal spell card, it does have some disadvantages when compared to something like Dust Tornado or, or Mystical Space Type. Why did I say Dust Tornado first? Mystical Space Typhoon, you know, the gold standard for spell or trap removal. Because Mystical Space Typhoon is, is a quick play spell card. It's a spell speed too. It means you can chain it to stuff and, and use it like a trap card or or play it during the battle phase for some hoo-ha. There's, it, it's versatile. So, why would you ever play Night Beam? Despite the fact that spell speed one, the fact that your opponent can't chain the thing you're trying to blow up with it to uh, the Night Beam is kind of cool. If it's like a battle trap, it didn't matter to begin with, so feels bad, man. But if it's something like, I don't know, what is a card you might want to use? Karma Cut, I guess. How about Karma Cut? That's a real trap card. So it's your main face. You haven't done anything yet, and you see that face down. Your opponent's got it. You're like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. And you're like, fine, Night Beam it. Right? And now your opponent's shut out of luck. He can't chain his Karma Cut and try to deal with something that's on your side of the board because you Night Beamed him. Depending on the format and what kind of back row is live in the game, Night Beam can be a pretty solid little option. Especially when it's a lot of, like, monster effect negation, like Breakthrough Skill and Phoenix Chain and things like that. Here we go. Number five, Heretic Seal of Convocation. The Heretics came out in this set. They're all pretty good. Uh, well, the five and ups are good. The, the, the level fours are kind of whack. Well, why are you boring me? I'm right. But the, the fives and ups are good. The, the ones you play that you actually give a shit about, those ones are good. However, uh, the fact that, uh, what is it, Tefnuit is a cyber dragon means if you go first or your opponent just didn't do anything, sometimes you can't make a play. So in, in that case, it, it helps to have the right heretic. And how do you do that? I guess Drac Connection would help. Or Heretic Seal of Convocation, which is just a rota for the entire archetype. Add one Heretic monster from your deck to your hand, period. This shit isn't even once per turn. This is a fantastic search spell card. Uh, and literally every single archetype in the game would do awful things to have a card like this. <laughs> I mean, I would. It's just a good spell card. I, I'm not going to in-depthly explain to you why a, a Rota for an entire archetype is a good card. I don't need to lecture you about how consistency is good for a deck. Do I? Number four is Card Card D. Side note, uh, I just realized that I'd been talking to my little picture of myself uh, and not to the lens. So if it looks like I'm kind of staring beyond you, it is not because I'm talking at your foreheads <laughs> i'm just uh, distracted by little me i'm not used to the fact that i could actually see if i'm in frame or not i love this new camera holy crap simo eat your heart out but uh card card d uh uh if flat car this puppy, you can fit so many uh, plus ones in it. This level two earth machine cannot be special summoned. During your main phase one, if this was normal summoned this turn, you can tribute this car, draw two cards. It is now your end phase. That says draw two, baby. You know what that means? Plus one. Oh, but you can't special summon the turn you use this effect. So this really does beg the question, just what will a Yu-Gi-Oh player do for a real plus one? What would you do for it? Plus one. Hell, we'll banish most of our extra deck, we'll banish the top ten cards of our deck, hell, we'll uh, basically do nothing else during the turn and just play this thing. We will do that because a plus one is, is just so valuable. The way to look at it is, for every one card I have, should be able to deal with every one card my opponent has, right? Like one for ones. And if I have more cards than him at the end of the turn, I'll actually have stuff and he'll have nothing. That is a very stupid but simple way of looking at uh, why card advantage is so valuable in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's for every card I have is something I can do and deal with something that my opponent has. Granted, nowadays in Yu-Gi-Oh, card card is a little slow, but this did definitely see play, especially in like more stun type decks where I wasn't really going to do anything on my own turn anyway, so pfft, card card D. You see me dancing around because I got to pee and uh, I just want to get this. I just want to I just want to get my recording done because I'm, I've got some momentum. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. 
Number three is Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger. Another retrain of Gaia the, the, the Dragon Champion here. This time, a rank 7 XC monster. But what makes this a novel XC monster is not the fact that it does anything particularly interesting. No, it is because you can just special summon it on top of uh, rank 5s or rank 6s and just use those as XC material instead. <laughs> it's one of those XCs of an XCs that doesn't require a rank up magic card. It's just another free thing like Infinity from your extra deck. And why would you want to do this? Uh, well, what does this thing do? It just does piercing damage, right? Yeah, this thing just does piercing damage. It doesn't really do anything. It's a beat stick. 2600 isn't terrible, but it's not great. But what we what we use it for is like uh, when we play an XC monster and you detach and its effects like if you do this, you can't you can't attack this turn with this guy or some who and it's bad or whatever. And you're like, oh, well, that's crap. I don't want to do that. So bam, Gaia Charger. Now I can't attack. Mmm, feels good. Like, uh, how about a tomb, a tomb, atom, a tomb? He came out in this set. He's not, he's not a world beater, and I, I think he can't attack, right? If he uses his effect. Hieratic dragon king, a, 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 a tomb. Aha, see, I knew it. Yeah, he can't attack when you use his summony effect, so you slap guy on top of him. See, I, I remember things. It's been forever since I've seen any of this stuff get played. All right, number two, man, I might have to, I'm, I gotta pee. Ugh, gross, asparagus. Gross. What was I on, number two? But I just went number one. <laughs> photon, photon strike bouncer. Oh, see, my momentum is shot. Rank six, light warrior, uh, 2,700 attack. Oh, it's actually bigger than I remember it being. 2,000 defense. What does this rank six boy do? <laughs> Nothing, it's bad. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's actually really good. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated, on your opponent's side of the field, detach one XC material from this card, negate that effect, and then hit him for a thousand burn damage. Nah, I wasn't joking. The card's actually really solid. Monster negation on a monster is a good effect. And the fact that it is in your extra deck is uh, even better, because you can just make it whenever you want. That, that's, that's like, <sighs> come on. No, nope, that's worse. Because you know, what's in your extra deck, it's available to you at, at any point, really. So it's just, when I need to put a monster that stops another monster from doing a monster stuff, I can just make Bowser. Did you notice, also, that uh, with the tomb, and this thing, and Gaia, uh, it's almost like uh, Heretics came out of the gate swinging with everything they need to be a successful strategy. I think even Wattel came out in this set. <laughs> Konami just sometimes, they just want a deck to work. It's... It's, they're not, they're not, they're not even shy about it. The burn damage is pretty disrespectful. I gotta, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it gets late game and they don't have a lot of life left. This is a, this is a cheesy way to win. And your, your opponent's gonna have to try to out it without monster effects. So, like a game three scenario or something. Bouncer's, Bouncer's cute. Bouncer's cute. I like that card. All right, we do have an honorable mention. Lady of D. What are you, five? I... I don't even remember what it does. I just couldn't not make a joke. Uh, <laughs> come on, Jerome. What, do you think we wouldn't notice? And a dishonorable mention is, I don't know, what do we got here? Uh, fuck it, Fluff. I feel like that's how they named the card, too. <laughs> Level two, Wind Spellcaster Monster, which makes me think that this is somehow related to Shining Elf, which is like the same thing, but rank two. It even kind of looks like this thing. 800 attack and like, what is it, say 1300 defense? Yes, okay. Most return you can reveal a monster in your hand to increase this thing's level until the end phase. Wow, that's real bad. You blow your normal summon on it and then uh, modulate its level when you could have played something that was already the level you wanted instead of this hooey. And today's sponsor is yourplaymat.com. If you guys want some custom card sleeves, uh, go check out their website and upload your own image or you can pick from their catalog. They have some really cool designs there. Use my promo code, davinator 12110 yp 10% off your order and I would appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing what designs Ryan might come up with. Some davinator, davinator exclusives maybe, Ryan? They make good tournament prizes for the Discord tournaments. Oh yeah, and we got Discord tournaments. If you're interested in that, uh, there's a link in the description down below for that as well. Number one best card in this set is Big Eye. Yeah, man, Big Eye, he was crazy. He's a flip effect, and, and everyone makes this joke. It's not funny, Dave. 
Stop it. <laughs> I don't even remember what it does. It doesn't like let you like look at the top cards of your deck or some garbage. <laughs> Who gives a shit? No, it's number 11, Big Eye. Uh, cause this card's fantastic. Rank seven, <laughs> probably one of the best ranks to be, especially coming up here soon. 2600, 2000 defense, looking pretty solid as the monster stats are concerned. And once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to target one monster your opponent controls. Take control of that target. There's a awful lot of until the end of the turn missing on that effect. What? Yeah, that's, that's a permanent steal, baby. Feels fucking fantastic, frankly. Uh, this card can't attack the turn it uses this. <laughs> Big freaking whoop. <laughs> that's not a limitation, Konami. Mo, we, we, we truly do not care if the effect is good. You're just gonna, you're just gonna punch him in the face whatever you took, frankly. Stealing an opponent's monster is fantastic. Why is that? Well, uh, it's great advantage. It's practically a free plus one. You could even make the argument it's actually a plus two because your opponent's going neg one uh, at the same time. So if you're depending on if you're considering general card advantage or just personal, uh, you, can, you can play with the numbers and it's actually, uh, the, the numbers are certainly in your favor this way. And as long as that monster is targetable, you can steal it. It's a great way of getting rid of monsters that like can't be removed from the field by like destruction or something like that. You can use them for your own evil deeds. Or you can synchro them away, or exceed them away, or tribute them, or whatever the freak you want to do with them. Who cares? It's your monster now. And that is until you get to a mirror match. The possibilities are limitless. Man, they really, uh, they really wanted Dragon Rulers to be good, didn't they? These rank sevens, man, they're just hitting it out of the park. But yeah, big guy, uh, stealing your opponent's crap is great. All right, guys, that was Galactic Overlord. I hope you liked it. Uh, this set is, uh, this set's actually stupid. There's tons of cards that I kind of mentioned in passing that could have also been on the list. This, it's good to see a powerful set, you know? We're a long way away from uh, mid-GX where everything was bad and it made me want to quit doing the series because everything sucks. We still got a few coming up, but uh, the next couple I think are really solid. But anyway, that was the list. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below with what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.